Yesterday afternoon, we celebrated the funeral mass for Maddie Kolb. As I mentioned last week, she's an 11 year old member of the parish and a sixth grader at our school, Frasati. Maddie died last Saturday after a 15 month battle with brain cancer. I mentioned Maddie in today's homily because she offers us a wonderful contrast to the rich man in today's gospel and the wealthy Israelites mentioned in our first reading. The wealthy Israelites were living the high life in ancient Israel about 600 years before Jesus, while others in the community were suffering. The wealthy did not lift a finger to help the poor, the widow, and the alien in their midst, even though they had the resources to help. And even though helping the other was at the heart of their covenant with God. Woe to you, says the prophet Amos. Woe to you for failing to assist those in need. Woe to you for your indifference to the poor. Woe to you for failing to keep the covenant. You will be the first to go into exile, away from the promised land, because of your failure to address the needs of the poor. In the gospel, we have a similar situation. Lazarus sleeps at the door of the rich man. The rich man had more than enough for himself and more than enough to help Lazarus. But the rich man preferred to step over Lazarus each day rather than tend to his needs. The rich man was indifferent to the plight of the poor. Woe to you. At the end of his life, the rich man went into exile, not political exile away from the promised land, but to hell, separated from God for all eternity. Contrast this indifference to this following example from the life of Maddie Kolb, our 11-year-old. After several months of brain cancer, including at least two brain surgeries, Maddie's family applied to the Make-A-Wish Foundation on her behalf. She was chosen to make a wish. She could meet whoever she wanted, go wherever she wanted, receive whatever she wanted. They would grant her one wish. Young people, what would you have done? Huh? Old people. What would you have done? What would you wish for? Maddie did some research, thinking and praying. She finally chose her wish. She wanted a $6,500 shopping spree to Target. Wow, she was wealthy for an 11-year-old, right? In February of this year, she went to Target and chose $6,500 worth of gift cards, toys, games, and supplies. And she gave it all away. She gave it to the children in the hospital. When asked why she did that, Maddie said, I know what it's like to be sick and in the hospital. I want other kids to have something nice and to cheer them up. Well done, you little good faithful servant. She had that special concern for others that God desires us to have, commands us to have. She then used her wealth to address that concern. She cared for Jesus found in those little ones in the hospital. She imitated the saints of every time and place who imitated Christ, who gave his life away so that we would have life and have it to the full. To those who minister to Jesus in the poor, he says, come on now, enter your master's joy. Today the church celebrates the 105th World Day of Prayer for Migrants and Refugees. The world is experiencing the greatest migration in all of human history. Approximately one billion people are displaced today. That's 
of the world's population. Some are moving based on natural disasters and lack of opportunities to provide for one's families. More than 70 million are being forcibly displaced, fleeing violence, political corruption, religious persecution, lawlessness. Some of these people are coming to our country, the richest and most blessed nation in the world, arguably the richest and most blessed nation in human history. And how do we respond to this crisis? What is our attitude towards our brothers and sisters on the move? In his message for this year's World Day of Prayer for Migrants and Refugees, Pope Francis contends that our response is not just about the migrant. He says it's about us. Overcoming our fears. Strengthening the gifts of compassion and charity. Desiring to build the kingdom of God. It's not about the migrants, it's about us. It's about obeying the gospel and honoring Christ and the poor and the suffering. It's our attitude toward the other, especially those who are less fortunate than us, those who are risking their lives to provide for their families and raise their children in safety, those who want to practice their pr Christian faith without persecution. It's not about the migrants. Today is about us. Do we see the Lord in those people fleeing their homelands in unsafe boats and rafts? Do we hear the cries of the Lord in those children separated from their parents, their parents who have risked everything so that their children could have a decent shot at life? Do we see the Lord being trafficked in those little girls, sold and traded like animals? Do we recognize the Lord being held in detention centers throughout the world, many in squalid conditions? Or are we indifferent, like the wealthy Israelites and the rich man from the gospel? We don't have all the answers on migrants and refugees. We certainly don't have all the answers on the poor. We do not have answers on those on the margins of life. But that we do not have all the answers does not mean that we do not care or will not help or lead us to say, hmm, tough luck. You should have been born in the United States. God is calling us to care for the least in our midst, for the Lazaruses at our doorstep. The gospel does not require us to have open borders or that we admit everyone who comes to our door. But as I have said before, the gospel does require that we have open eyes to see the other as a human being made in the image and likeness of God. That we have open hearts to treat the other as Christ. The gospel commands us to be available to the least among us, including immigrants, refugees, to treat everybody with dignity and to welcome those who come into our country. The gospel expects us to put pressure on our leaders in government and say, chop, chop, we've been at this for 30 years, get it done. To pass immigration reform. The gospel demands that we be the face of God to those in need, including those who might not look like us or speak like us, or worship like us. And why? If I can adopt Maddie Kolb's response to why she gave her wealth to the children in the hospital, we know in our collective our memory what it's like to be on the move. Because our ancestors left their homelands to come here. And so we can use some of our resources today to cheer up today's migrants by hearing their cries and addressing their needs. It's not about the migrants, it's about us. God sets the migrant and the refugees before us and says, serve me in them. And your response to the least among you will be my response to you. Which do you prefer to hear from me? 
Woe to you, away from me, off to exile, or well done, good and faithful servant, enter your master's joy. The choice is yours.